Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Macy's stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Macy's is a department store chain founded in 1858. It became a division of the Cincinnati-based Federated Department Stores in 1994. Through Federated, the company is affiliated with the Bloomingdale's department store chain. It is the largest U.S. department store company. It has 544 stores. Its flagship store is located in New York City. That store has 1.1 million square feet of retail space, making it one of the largest department stores in the world. The company has conducted the annual Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade in New York City since 1924 and has sponsored the city's annual 4th of July fireworks display since 1976. Let's get started with the model. This is a mid-cap company, 4.6 billion market cap. They're trading at $14 a share and they have 310 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So the company had 1.2 billion of free cash flow in 2018. It's going down at a pretty good rate each year. It's down to 429 million. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And they had a lot of net income in 2018, 1.5 billion. And that's going down as well. It's negative in a trailing 12 months. Revenue is a sales for the company, and that grew from 25 billion to 26 billion, then dropped down to 25 billion, then down to 23 billion in a trailing 12 months. Department stores suffered due to COVID. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. For example, the payroll for the employees at the department store. The difference between those two numbers is the gross profit, and they had the lowest gross profit in the trailing 12 months. Below that is operating expenses, and below that is operating income. They do have positive operating income every year, which is good, but it's really small in the trailing 12 months due to low revenue. Below that is the interest they pay in their debt. Then below that is other income and expenses. So it looks like they had a pretty big impairment in the trailing 12 months, three and a half billion dollars. That's why they had such a big negative, not because of their operating income, which was small. It was mainly from this asset impairment. They did have positive net income in prior years, which is good, but it was decreasing a lot each year from 1.5 billion to 1.1 billion to 600 million. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. Then you have capital expenditures. Capital expenditures are investments in property, plant, and equipment. Operating cash flow minus capex gives you your free cash flow. And they did have positive free cash flow every year, which is great. The company is also doing a great job at reducing their debt. They paid down $1 billion in 2018, $1 billion in 2019, and $600 million in 2020. And it doesn't look like they issued any debt either. Let's look at their operating cash flow. I like to look at operating cash flow when I invest in a company. Operating cash flow is net income converted to cash because net income is accounting profit and loss. To calculate operating cash flow, you start with net income, negative three billion. Then we have to add back that asset impairment. It's not here because sometimes Yahoo Finance doesn't pick up all the information. We also have to add back 982 million of depreciation. That's a non-cash item. That's an expense that brings down your net income, but it doesn't affect cash flow. So you add it back on a cash flow from operations section. They also had half a billion in other non-cash items and 360 million in changes in working capital. Even though the company reported a $3 billion loss, they actually generated 1.5 billion of cash flow. You could see how volatile net income is. It goes from half a billion to negative 3.2 billion. But when you look at operating cash flow, it goes from 1.6 billion to 1.5 billion. It's much smoother. I would not ignore net income but I believe operating cash flow gives you more information. But if you were to look at many, many years of financials, the numbers should even out. 
Let's look at a capital structure. $6.4 billion of equity, $7.5 billion of debt. They have 46% equity, 54% debt. Their net debt is $6.8 billion. Their WAC is 8%. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's $9.6 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $8.8 .8 billion. We divide that by 310 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $28. They're trading at $14, so they're trading at a 52% discount. It's a really strong buy according to the model. Simply, Wall Street values the company at $8, so they're saying it's overvalued. I do not think my future free cash flows were too aggressive. I think they were fairly conservative. But apparently, Simply, Wall Street thinks the company's going to struggle. I know online has affected department stores, especially companies like Amazon. But this company has been around a really long time, and they're still making money. The stock was trading over $40 a few years back, but it's been coming down a lot ever since. It looks like it's at a pretty low point. Not as low as it was a few months ago, but still well below its all-time highs. In March of 2020, the company announced it was cutting its dividend payment. This company has a pretty high beta, 2.01, so the stock moves two times the market. It's pretty volatile. The stock has gone down 21% in the past 52 weeks, worse than the S&P 500, which went up 15% in the same time frame. The 52-week low was $4, the high was 22 and the stock is trading above its 50-day and 200-day moving average, so it seems to be on an uptrend. This is a really liquid stock. 30 to 45 million shares are traded each day. Almost all the shares outstanding are on float. 84% are held by institutions, and it has a really high short percentage. 32% of the shares are shorted. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago, you could have tripled your money if you sold after four or five years, but if you're still holding, you would be down to $9,000. BlackRock is the biggest shareholder at 15%. The next one is 9%, then Vanguard at 8.5%, then State Street, then Dimensional Fund. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 11, the median is 14, PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so they have negative PE. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share, they're at 0.2. That means investors are paying $0.20 cents for $1 revenue. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. They're at 0.7. That's a really low price to book also. And the way you calculate book value per share, it's equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities in the balance sheet, and they have $6.4 billion of equity, $1.4 billion of tangible equity, because they have $4 billion of goodwill and $1 billion of other intangibles on their balance sheet. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They cannot cover their interest payments with their EBIT. ROE is net income over equity. They have negative net income, so they have negative ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They're at 1.2, so they do have a really good current ratio. Their current assets are 700 million of cash, 400 million of receivables, and 5 billion of inventory. So the company does seem to be well capitalized. They had 400 million of free cash flow. They have over 1 billion of working capital and they cut their dividend. So if they have a similar amount of free cash flow in 2021, they'll have one and a half billion dollars of capital. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos on Briscoe Group and Kohl's, both in the same industry as Macy's. And if Macy's has a number in green, they're better than the average. If they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. So they're better in all the price multiples. They do have a negative PE, but that's better than average. They have a really low price sales and price to book. I've seen in some instances, really low price of sales is a value trap. I'm not saying this is, but that is a concern. They have a great current ratio, terrible ROE. They're a bit high in debt. They're about average of market cap, and they don't pay a dividend like Kohl's. So to summarize, this is a really big company. So there's not as much risk when you invest in a company that's over 150 years old, but of course there's always risk. They're still generating positive free cash flow, pretty strong revenue. It could be a short squeeze play. That should always be in the back of your mind whenever a company is highly shorted. I rank their free cash flows 3 out of 10 
because they're going down each year. I ranked their revenue 5 out of 10. They do have pretty good revenue, but it did drop in a trailing 12 months. And their ratios are ranked 4 out of 10. They're a bit weak because of the negative PE, the negative ROE. And I think the price of sales may be a value trap, but the other ratios are okay. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.